up, Dozer? You ready for ready for a road trip? Going to Sacramento. It is 4:20 in the morning. So, yeah, got Dozer in. We have got my bag full of stuff. It is time to go. All right, welcome back to countdown to my first Ironman two weeks remaining we are actually on our way to sacramento it is 4 30 at the moment we're slightly late uh we are on the way to sacramento we're gonna do or i'm gonna swim the 2.4 mile course swim and this is gonna be like this is live practice <laughs> again it's uh i'm very very excited this is the only discipline of the race that i have no idea how it's gonna be so I'm very excited to uh, get this swim in and uh, we'll see. Everything is gonna be determined if I'm comfortable or not today or not. And uh, if, if I'm not, then I better hurry up because I got two weeks to go. But anyways, I'm excited. We got the dog, we got the bags all nice and packed. Lissy is waiting on her coffee. I'm waiting on Lissy. <laughs> so I'm so excited. We will see you guys in Sacramento in two hours. All right, here we go. That is the uh, bridge that we will be swimming towards on um, the race. All right, so I'm all suited and booted. Let me uh, show you where we're at here. Sunrise coming up. And uh, so I approach the dock and I hear this like sound in the background. And it isn't registered in the beginning, but after a couple times, it's registering. And uh, it's a sea lion. This might sound very stupid, but I didn't realize that sea lions swim up river, swim in freshwater, or is this seawater? I don't know. Uh, I, have, I have some questions. <laughs> I am uh, unaware of this information, so I'll keep you guys posted. Welcome back. It has now been 24 hours since my swim down the Sacramento and American River. And here's my experience. So there's good news and there's bad news. Good news is I completed the course, the, the 2.4 mile course. And I completed it in an hour and five minutes. And that's the good news. And the bad news is that I'm having a very, very hard time swimming with my wetsuit. The additional buoyancy is throwing my posture off. And because it's throwing off my posture, it's throwing off my feel of what I'm normally used to swimming, the posture that I'm in, right? So if I'm normally, let's just say I'm, I'm leg heavy. So if I'm swimming like this, well, my body and my mind perception feels like that is normal. Now with the additional buoyancy of the wetsuit, it puts me here, right? Now it doesn't seem like a big deal, but what's happening is that the, I feel like it's like, because I'm here, right? Because my lower half is up, my upper half is down. Even if it's level, it feels as, as, as if someone's driving my head into the water and I'm having a hard time getting used to the position. And disclaimer, 
these are not excuses. These are just my thoughts on the whole situation. I can admit my swimming is not the best. I've, I've learned and I've done great learning without a wetsuit, but with this wetsuit, it's messing up my mind. So again, these are just thoughts, not excuses. I accept I'm not a good swimmer, but um, yeah, so it's, it's throwing off my, my perception. Another good news is that under pressure or during something, although I can be extremely fearful, I don't panic. And because I don't panic, I'm able to calm myself down. And of all the adventures I've ever done, no matter how scary it was, when it was time to jump, it was time to jump. When it was time to go, it was time to go. There was never any hesitation. So the reason I say that is that while I'm attempting to sw swim yesterday, when I couldn't breathe, I didn't just stop and, uh, you know, I guess egg beater, whatever. I just flipped my back and started backstroking. And that was good. My mind just went right into, well, if I can't face down, then I'm gonna face up. And if I'm gonna face up, then I better keep on moving because, you know, there's a beginning and there's an end. There is no, I'm gonna wait for someone to help me. So any time that I would struggle, boom, I flip on my back and then I would, you know, backstroke. And then when it was time for me to, you know, when I've calmed myself down, calmed my, my breathing, I'll flip on over and go as far as I can. And, you know, I would do that back and forth. Now, in my mind, I equivalent, I, I, to me, this equivalent of jogging and walking, jogging and walking during a marathon, right? I'm not saying one is better when, you know, like if I have a goal of, I want to be able to run the whole marathon without stopping, then that's, that's a good goal, right? If you stop and walk, there's nothing wrong with that. There's just a different, you know, finishing versus non-stopping. So in my mind, you know, I've already conceded that I'm not going to be able to swim the full 2.4 miles face first, you know, I gonna, I'm gonna have to flip on over and go back and forth. But at some point in my triathlon career, I would love to finish without flipping onto my back. So with that said, going back and forth allowed me to finish in an hour and five minutes. Now, uh, there were other roles or other factors that played into it. So in the beginning, as I'm walking towards the boat, you know, I'm hearing these sea lions and like I was confused, you know, I wasn't in the right mind because like I'm trying to get prepared and I'm like, sea lions, like it's in the name, sea. What are they doing in the river, right? I forgot that they're mammals and they're just holding their breath, they're not fish. So that, you know, that was one of the first things that kind of threw me off in the beginning. It was like, huh, sea lions. And then as we start heading to where we had to jump in and swim, you know, there were sea lions swimming along the, the boat and one of the guys, he's like, you can tell he's like, he's in fear, total fear. And he's just like, ah, oh. you know, just, you know, you can see it in his, in, his, in his head. That made me feel comfortable because at least I'm not the only one who has that wildlife fear and that unknown of water that you can't even see. So that helped me calm down. Other people were just as fearful. And like, so those are the thoughts that were running through my head in the beginning. Right. So once that guy was in fear, I was like, okay, cool. That calmed me down. And I was able to kind of absorb my surroundings, right? The surroundings of the river of, uh, you know, certain people who were walking their dogs or walking early in the morning for whatever reason, you know, I saw, you know, tents up and down the river where, you know, where people live, you know, just watching people wake up, I can smell fire or the beginnings of fire, you know, what people stay warm. I was smelling uh, someone cooking breakfast. Like I remember smelling these things as we were going up river. And as we were going down river, I smelled those smells too. So, so I guess what I'm saying is my body was very aware of its surroundings as dangerous as I felt, right? There wasn't much danger, but just the unknown, right? Like there was a couple times where I looked down and I'm swimming and I saw a shadow of a huge fish and I was like, oh, <laughs> so I flip one over on my back. I'm like, this would be a good time to start backstroking. Not only was the, the buoyancy of the wetsuit changing my normal perception, which I, which I struggled, but the fear also gave me some of that anxiety. Like it was you know kind of hard to breathe or, I mean, I wasn't finding a rhythm because of just all these different, you know, these new factors, you know, like the biggest factor I think that it's hard getting used to is having no feedback, right? Again, I'm, I've explained this before when I went to the Russian River, where as I'm looking down, when I swim in the pool, 
I can see the tile, right? So as I'm swimming, I can see the tile and depending how fast the tile is moving also determines how fast I'm going. I can see that, that's feedback for me. But in the water, in the open water, there is no feedback. I can't see the ground, right? So I can't see if I'm moving. So once I, I breathe, I can see the shoreline, but the shoreline is not giving me, the, I'm only looking as long as I, I'm taking, I'm taking my breath in, I'm going back down. So the majority of my vision is downward versus sideways. So I can't really get a good feedback in front of me or side of me. I also am sighting as I'm swimming. And again, that gives me some feedback, but not a feedback that I can determine my consistent speed. So Lissy's dad recommended that I swim with a, a metronome and I bought it and I tempted it and just wasn't feeling the importance of it so i stopped now i see the importance of the metronome because now i need to find a rhythm with no feedback and if i can find the rhythm with practice of rhythm then i would probably succeed a lot better in the swimming but lesson learned we'll find that for the next race and then the feedback they did get i just couldn't breathe so i would go on my back and then you know one of the ladies who was on a paddleboard you know you know for safety she looks at me as she's swimming she's like are you uh as she's paddling and she goes are you okay i'm like no i'm good like i just i'm having a hard time finding rhythm and she goes slow down every time you go on your back you're catching your breath and then as soon as you go back onto your swim she goes you're like going 100 miles an hour and i was like oh good feedback right that's what i needed Although I'm not going to have that during the race, but I needed that at that moment because then I can say, okay, I, re I didn't realize it was going fast. So now I was able to find a rhythm based on that feedback. So after that happened, I started to get comfortable. I was like, okay. And you know, when you're swimming, you think of 2.4, you think of, man, that's far, right? I mean, it is far. And what I'm very, very fortunate is to have this race in a river. So the river has a flow. Now, when you're looking at the river top side, it doesn't look like it's fast. I even saw my friend on the boat. I was like, I thought you said the river was fast. He goes, it is, it's moving. I'm like, man, it's like a slow pace. It doesn't matter. That slow pace is assisting you, right? So, you know, I'm fortunate that I can start backpedaling or backstroking and catching that current because it's really helpful. If I was like in the ocean going against current or if I was in a, a still lake, ooh, man. So luckily the Alaska got canceled and luckily I'm in a good situation for worst case scenario. So I'm really, really glad that this is happening. Again, a lot of stuff that I'm learning. And again, I was naive and I admit it. Anyway, so the feedback that I was getting was, and you know, once we all jumped out of the boat, everyone started at their own pace. One thing that my friend told me, Alberto, he's like, hey, when you jump in, because this was the second time running, uh, swimming it. He's like, when you jump in, just flow a little bit, get your, you know, your mind right, absorb the, uh, the temperature, such and such. So I'm like, cool. So when I jumped in, I did that. I was like, okay, let me just kind of breathe. And I went off. And as I started, I didn't realize that I started off in, with the first group. Not that there were groups, but you know, people who felt comfortable already went, went already. People who kind of wanted to start off slow, they took their time. I, I guess I didn't take that long of time to get comfortable, which I should have. And I started going. And as I was going back and forth, as I was going into my back, I was able to look behind me. And I realized little by little that the people were catching up to me. And I ended up where I was second to last eventually, because I'm trying to get into my rhythm and everything and something inside of me said you know no disrespect to anyone no disrespect to the last person whatever something in my mind just drove me like hey man get on board right whatever you're dealing with you need to get over it and that really kind of put things into perspective like the fear of the the wildlife went away the fear of uh, all these little things started to go away once i started to to get all that stuff that i was not supposed to pay attention to i was paying attention to it you know, it, it unfortunately took that last person to get approach me to really like, hey, kick in, let's go, stop. So once I went, I then started to feel comfortable. But unfortunately, that started to get comfortable towards the end of the race, like, or the uh, the course. So yeah, I got two weeks and I need to get on this, this swimming of this with this wetsuit, but I'm glad I did it made me feel comfortable. I know where my weaknesses are. I admit and accept my weaknesses. I had to play the victim for a little bit and kind of let that fear get to me, which I'm glad it got, you know, got kicked out of my, out of my head towards that middle of the, uh, the course. So I'm glad I, I'm glad all in all, I'm glad I went through it. And you know, I'm going to feel a lot more confident the second time I'll still have the same struggles, but I at least know what to expect. So that's the cool thing. So I know that was a long explanation, but that's how I felt.
So hopefully it gets better within the next two weeks. All right, see you in the next video. All right, so we have one wetsuit here. This is my O'Neill. This is my surfing wetsuit. And this one is the wetsuit for my tri or my tri suit. Now, if you look immediately, right? My issue is my hips, right? Look at the hips here. You can see that it is it's, you know, it's pretty thick. I can feel the thickness of uh, the wetsuit. Again, great quality wetsuit. Now, if you look at the O'Neill, right? Look how thin it is. Again, I also understand that one is broken in and the other one is brand new, right? So you can see the, the difference between the thickness and look at the legs, right? Uh, they, all, they both go down to my ankles. But the tri suit just looks so much more bulkier, right? You see the difference? All right, that one looks like a athletic fit, and this one looks like a, a big boy fit. Fit, <laughs> and again, you can see the hips. Look how big they are. That's the buoyancy that's just taking over. And this one doesn't have that thickness or that buoyancy, and they're both five millimeters, so they're, it's not like one is thicker than the other. It's the th same thickness. This one's just broken in. I've used that one a lot, so. Again, I don't know if it's just broken in or if it's just way too much padding for my needs. So that's my dilemma. I got 13 days to figure it out. So we're gonna uh, test it. I'll come back with the results and we will see you guys next week. But yeah, that's it. Look at that thickness, look at that thinness. Well, all right guys, see you then.